All right, if you turn to Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 1 says, At the same time, saith Jehovah, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith Jehovah, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel when I went to cause them to rest. Jehovah hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again will I, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. Thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant, and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise, yea, and let us go up to Zion, unto the... Jehovah our Elohim, for thus saith Jehovah, sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Jehovah, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country, and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Yeshua, I just come to you this afternoon, and I pray that you bless this message. I pray, Jehovah, that we again return unto Zion, unto the city, Jehovah, that thou hast prepared, and been preparing the place you said you're going to go and prepare a place for us. And I pray that your bride, the city of Jehovah, your bride, New Jerusalem, Jehovah, will be filled with its children, Jehovah. And I pray that you just bless it. This message fills with your Ruach Hodesh. And I pray, Yeshua, in thy precious name, so be it. All right. So... Here in Jeremiah 31, and I wanted to keep reading here in verse, verse 10. It says, Hear the word of Jehovah, all ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him, and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. For Jehovah hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion. All right. And shall flow together to the goodness of Jehovah for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice and dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. And I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith Jehovah. So here in Jeremiah, all right, we learn how... There's coming a day of restoration and rest for the children of Israel. Last Sabbath we learned how Yeshua is leading us from one prepared place to another prepared place. Just like in the first Exodus, how Jehovah went before them, Yeshua went before them to prepare the way before them. To keep them in the way. Yeshua is still leading us from one prepared place to another prepared place. We learn that the final destination is Mount Zion. Okay? The final destination is Mount Zion. We learn that before we enter Zion, 
that we go through the last prepared place. It's called the wilderness. And if you paid attention to these verses and last week's verse, we learned in Isaiah chapter 35, or if you want to turn there real quick, go back, keep your hand here in Jeremiah 31, go back to last week's uh, verse, Isaiah chapter 35. We learned about the wilderness. Isaiah 35, 1, uh, verse 1. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy in singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon they shall see the glory of Jehovah and the excellency of our God. And then in verse 6, it says, Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. They're rejoicing. Their sorrow is turning into joy. Where? For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No line shall be there, no nor any ravenous beast shall go up therein. It shall not be found there. But the redeemed, the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of Jehovah shall return. It's a returning. And come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. And listen. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. It's going to go away. It will flee away. Remember those verses. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 31. In Isaiah 35 verse 10, And the ransom of Jehovah shall return and come to Zion with songs and er everlasting joy upon their heads. In Jeremiah, in verse 6, For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion, unto Jehovah our Elohim. After last week, in Isaiah 35, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Chodesh, showed me this verses in Jeremiah 31, which is speaking of the same events and the same time of the return of the house of Israel. All right. In verse 2 of Jeremiah 31, or in verse 1, it says, At the same time, saith Jehovah, will I be a God? Be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. This is the covenant. This is the gospel. All right? Verse 2 Thus saith Jehovah, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause them to rest. There's a coming day of rest, the last seventh day. And then in verse 3, Jehovah hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again I will build thee, and thou shalt be built. O virgin of Israel, thou shalt again be adorned with thy tabrets, and shall go forth in the dances of them that make merry. 
He's building again. He's laying in Zion the chief cornerstone. He's building it again. Why? The tabernacle of David, which has fallen. Israel is in a scattered state today. The first exodus, Jehovah calls the children of Israel out of Egypt. And we're, we're going to read and learn about it. He called them out. And He led them through where? The wilderness. Where? From prepared place to prepared place. Until they entered into the final destination, the promised land. So he leads them where? The final place of the name, the place of his rest. The place where he puts his name there. Alright, that, that place is called Yah, Yah, Ru, Salam. They were going, they were marching to Zion. Where are we heading to? The same place. There's a second exodus. Why? Because after the first exodus, when the children of Israel would gather together, and the shepherd, God gave him the shepherd. What? Who was the shepherd? King David. Type of Yeshua. King David. Who shepherded Israel. His anointed king. They were in the land. They were all together as a nation. They're in the kingdom. They're all keeping Torah. And there was a time of blessing. But what happens? Later on, after King David's sons, they became wicked. The nations, the nation of Israel, ten of the ten, ten of the kingdom, ten of the tribes rebelled against Judah. I think Benjamin. All right, and they and they split. the The Levites stayed with Judah. They stayed faithful, but then later on, even Judah and became corrupt until all of Israel was taken over to Babylon. All right? They came back and Yeshua was going to come to restore the kingdom. They were waiting for it. But they would not. So still today, God wants to gather His children together and bring us towards, march us towards Zion. This, that's what these verses are talking about. Turn to Verse 2 speaks of those that were left of the sword. Here in Jeremiah 31. Verse 2 speaks of those that were left of the sword. Found grace. Where? In the wilderness. This is a future prophecy. Then in verse 4. Again I will build thee and thou shalt be built. Who is he speaking of? Who are these verses speaking of? It's speaking of the families of Israel. Look at verse 1. At the same time, saith Jehovah, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. What are these verses speaking of? Isaiah 35, Jeremiah 31. Speaking of Israel. Alright, keep your hand here. Turn to Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6, look at verse 26. It says, These are that these are that Aaron and Moses, to whom Jehovah said, Bring out Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their armies. These are they which spake to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are that Moses and Aaron. Look at the way it's worded. Again, I'll read it. Verse 26. These are that Aaron and Moses to whom Jehovah said, 
Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their armies. These are they which spake to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring out the children of Israel from Egypt. These are that Moses and Aaron. That's who they are. These are that Moses and Aaron. And what is Moses and Aaron? It was Moses and Aaron that led the first exodus. Okay? They were what you would say the first evangelists. They were the ones who came and started to preach restoration and coming out of bondage. They're the first ones who started to come to the children of Israel who were in a place they shouldn't be in the under the kingdom of Egypt, in the land of Egypt. They're the ones who for 400 years were in Egypt serving Pharaoh. They shouldn't have been there. So they're the ones who came to restore them out, to set the captives free, to start to lead them to where? To the promised place, to a place where there's no more sorrow, to a place there's no more sighing, there's no more bondage, okay? There's no more burdens heavy to be uh, carried. There's no more... There laden with the load, they're coming out of a place they shouldn't be and they're going to be let out like a shepherd. This is that Aaron and Moses and the rock that followed them and that led them, the Ark of the Covenant that goes before them, which you're going to learn about. They're the first callers. They're the first evangelists. They're the ones who spoke. Since Moses says, I, I cannot speak. It was Aaron that spoke for Moses. Okay? As the mediator. So the, they're leading the children of Israel out. It was Yeshua, Hamashiach, who is both a type of Moses and Aaron that is leading and shepherding us out. For the second exodus. Okay. Yeshua. Came. For the restoration of Israel. All the prophecies of Messiah. Are for the restoration. Of Israel. The gospel. The, 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 the prophets cried. Of Yeshua HaMashiach. Why do we need the second exodus? Why? Because the children of Israel are again scattered throughout the nations. We're again in a place where we shouldn't be. We're in bondage. We're under the, the, say, the, the, the thumb or the jurisdiction of an unclean people of unclean leaders, of a godless people, and we're among them, scattered. We're not as one nation having one shepherd. The houses of Israel are divided. Yeshua, there's a prophecy that He'll take both the houses of Israel and, they'll put them to, and He'll put them together again in one under one shepherd. That's Yeshua. Why do we need the second exodus? Because we're all scattered. We're not at rest. We're not at the final destination. God's plan. From the very beginning. Before he laid the foundation of the heavens and the earth. Was to have his children. In his house. Go back to Genesis. Go back. To Adam and Eve in the garden. They're in the Father's house. They talk with the Father. 
They had fellowship with the Father. They communed with the Father. They had peace and they had rest. They were gathered together in one. They're in the Father's house, but they're driven out. Then you get the first exodus. Now you have the second exodus. The final goal, when you, by the time you get to Revelation, which we're going to read again, you're going to see God's plan. You're going to see His purpose. Why the gospel? Why do you read the things you read? It's for a purpose. And the more you study it, the more clear it gets. This is the plan of God. Turn to Matthew chapter 10. The more you start to understand about the Exodus, the Torah, why they're being led, how they're being led, the types and figure, figures and shadow of the true, the tabernacle, the altar, the Ark of the Covenant, the priests, the services, all of it, you start to understand your final destination. You start to understand what is to come. We're seeing the shadow and the type, but it's all laid out for what is to come. The gospel. All right, Matthew chapter 10. Let's read verse 5. These twelve Yeshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What's Yeshua telling the disciples? These are the twelve, the first twelve. That he calls as evangelists. What's the purpose of these evangelists? To go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He's specific to the house of Israel. Keep your hand there. Go back to Jeremiah chapter 31. Jeremiah 31, verse 1. At the same time, saith Jehovah, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. The families of who? The families of Israel. Turn to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Read verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15, chapter 15, verse 24. He says it again. But Yeshua answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The plan of the gospel. All right, and you're going to see how the gospel is for all the nations. But the plan of the gospel is from the foundation of the world. Yehovah's plan was to have his family with him in his house. The prepared place, the city, the city of God, whose builder, like we've been reading, and maker is God. The city of the tabernacle made without hands. 
not of this building, not of this catesis. It's not of this creation. It's made without hands. All right? God's city, which will come down, as we're going to read later in Revelation, that's His plan. Turn to John chapter 14. We read this verse. Last Sabbath and the week before, John chapter 14. We'll look at verse 1. It says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. He's gone to prepare a place for us. He's going to come again and receive us unto Himself. So Yeshua goes to prepare the place. Then He first starts to gather the families of the house of Israel. He says, beginning in Jerusalem and then in Samaria. And then on to the uttermost parts of the earth. Go and preach the gospel. Alright? He's, he's gone through the, the last 2,000 years calling the sheep home. Calling them to repentance. Calling them back into the Father's house. Saying, keep the commandments. Yeshua did not say, don't keep the commandments. He says, keep every jot and tittle till all is fulfilled. He comes to fulfill the Torah. What did he say? The Whether I go, ye know. We know where he's going. He's preparing New Jerusalem, Mount Zion. Okay? The prophets have declared this. Yeshua declared he's the builder. Just like the scripture says, whose builder for Abraham looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Yeshua is going, making the place, preparing it. Alright? And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. What is the way? The straight way. The narrow way. The way of keeping the fullness of the Torah. Keeping all the Torah. Not just the Torah, but exceeding the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Keeping both the letter and the spirit of the Torah. Unto the souls of just men made perfect. To the mediator of the new covenant. To the city of God. Mount Zion. That's where you've come. Hebrews chapter 12, and I've said this for years, and I'm telling you right now, we'll come back to Hebrews 12 after we're going through all these verses, and you're going to further understand the gospel, because by the time you get to Hebrews chapter 12, if you understand Hebrews chapter 12, you've coming nigh to perfection. You're go you've understood all of the scriptures. That's why I'm going back. I'm trying to explain to you every single thing, every single act, every single word, every single commandment, every single thing recorded in scripture is for you to learn. It's our example and our schoolmaster and our admonition to show us God's simple plan. And if you think about it this way, God calls, 
calls you and he leads you through the wilderness to bring you to the final destination. It's being prepared in heaven. Heaven will recede like a scroll. Heavens, they're going to roll up like a scroll. And the city of New Jerusalem, Mount Zion, is going to descend down from heaven. By the time you get to Revelation 21 and 22, that's it. And a lot of people, they'll read Revelation and they're missing the whole plan. They don't completely understand the why. They don't understand Moses and Aaron, the purpose. And what? why did Yeshua say, I have not come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel? Yeshua sticks to his plan. He never deviates from it. When you read the scripture, everything God's doing is to bring them on the, back to the straight way. The prophets are calling Israel saying, you've gone away. You've wandered away. You're, you're, you, you've, you've, you've backslidden away. Come back to Jehovah. Come back. The law and the prophets, come back. Yeshua says, come back to the law and the prophets. John the Baptist says, the axe is now laid at the root of the trees. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. He's saying, come back. Because he's going to come back when he brings his children through. Those that are left of the sword. Because this world is going to go through a great time of sword. And the famine and the pestilence. Those that were left found grace. Where? In the wilderness. You'll understand revelation better. You're going to understand the great tribulation period better. What is, the, what is the curses of Jehovah? The famine, the pestilence, and the sword. And today the world thinks that they've conquered all of them. They think they can have world peace. They think that their fertilizer and GMO, there will be no more pestilence. And they think their vaccines fixed all the diseases. I got news for them. It's going to come so hard upon them. The scripture says there's going to be few men left. And the few people that are left, they're going to look upon us, the ones who survived, and they're going to say, let us go with you, for we hear that God is with you. Let us go to Zion with you. We'll march to Zion with you. They'll be praising God, the scripture says, in the fires. They'll be saying, let us go back unto Zion. Let us come out of Babylon. Flee out of Babylon that you be not a partaker of her sins, of her plagues. Yeshua is leading us. In John chapter, we read there in John chapter 14, Yeshua calls his sheep. He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Yeshua calls his sheep. Turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 10. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance, an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Mashiach. The temple in heaven is opened. And Yeshua is going to stand there. Dividing the sheep and the goats. That entrance. Just like we read here. In Isaiah. and Jeremiah. It shall be called the highway of holiness. 
He goes through the wilderness called the highway of holiness. Where I go ye know, and the way ye know. Apostle Paul says, without holiness, no man may see Jehovah. Without holiness, the priest cannot serve in the tabernacle, in the temple. Without holiness, it's defiled. The door's shut. He says, Peter, Apostle Peter says here in chapter 1, verse 10, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua Mashiach. An entrance. You, the final place, we're not even going to cover it. One day we'll cover it. When you go through the gates to the city, as Revelation says, in the robes of spotless white, He's going to lead you where no tears will ever fall to the glad song of ages. That song has the Holy Spirit all over it. People who put down some of our songs that we sing, these old songs, they don't have the Holy Spirit. And that's the problem. People... Today don't have the Ruach Hodesh. It's to them foolishness of them that perish. To, to us who are saved, it's, it's life. It's salvation. We read last Sabbath, Isaiah chapter 35. Go back to Isaiah 35. Isaiah 35, we read in verse 10. It says, And the ransom of Jehovah shall return. The ransom. The call. The elect. And the ransom of Jehovah shall return. And come to Zion. With songs. And everlasting joy upon their heads. So an abundance, an entrance shall be ministered unto you. It's with songs, listen, an everlasting joy upon their heads. Peter talks about you're a royal priesthood as living stones built up. A spiritual house with everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. It's going to be gone. Then we read here. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 9. Turn to Jeremiah 31, verse 9. It says, They shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Again, it talks about they're going to come with weeping and with supplications. And then in verse 12 of Jeremiah chapter 31, it says, Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of Jehovah for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as the watered garden. And it says again, 
and they shall not sorrow any more at all. And they shall not sorrow any more at all. All right, keep your hand there and go turn to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And look at verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Listen. Neither sorrow. Nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. This verse, in verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Both Isaiah said it, Isaiah said it, and Jeremiah said it. Isaiah says in verse 10, And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Jeremiah says that they shall come with weeping, and with supplications will I lead them. And then in verse 12, And they shall not sorrow any more at all. These verses are talking about what's going to happen after the Great Tribulation. It's during the Great Tribulation that the children of Israel are led again through the wilderness. It's during this time that we say, turn to Jeremiah chapter 31, in verse... In the verse it says, uh, verse 6, where it says, For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount of Ephraim shall cry. Listen, what are they, they going to cry? Arise, yea, and let us go up to the Zion, unto Jehovah our God, our Elohim. Arise, and let us go up to Zion, unto Jehovah our God. This is the time when we're in the wilderness and we're coming out of the great tribulation that we're going to say, Arise, yea, and let us go up. Let us go up to Zion unto Jehovah our God. Turn to Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Verse 1, the word that Isaiah the son of Amoz saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last days, okay, when is Revelation written for? The last days, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Jehovah's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow unto it. Verse 3. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us, what, what? Go up. Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of Jehovah, to the house of the God of Jacob, 
And he will teach us of his ways. And we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah. And the word of Jehovah from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations. And shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords in the plowshares. And their spears in the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of Jehovah. Yeshua says, I am the light of the world. Both Jeremiah and Isaiah, they say, let us go up to Zion. Turn to Micah, the book of Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4, verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Jehovah shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it and many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up. Let us go up to the mountain of Jehovah and to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Torah shall go forth, out of, go forth of Zion and the word of Jehovah from Jerusalem. Both Isaiah and Micah say let us go up. Turn back to Revelation chapter 21. What is the final resting place? And what is the last prepared place before you go into the final resting place? It's the wilderness. Both of them say, let us go up. In Revelation chapter 21, in verse 2, it says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God. Out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Let us go up. The holy city, New Jerusalem, is coming down out of heaven. All right, let's pray.